Okay, so one of the common requests you get throughout the entirety of A-level chemistry is the request to write balanced equations, right? Um, now, you'll be used to writing balanced equations at GCSE, but most of the time they give you the formulae and all it is is your job to put the coefficients, that's the big balancing numbers, in front of those formulae. Whereas in A-level chemistry, you're quite often given a word equation and you have to know a lot of the chemical formulae or be able to work them out yourself. So what we're actually going to do is look at what you would do if you were asked to construct a balanced equation. And we're going to work out um, how we would comprise, uh, compose sorry, those formulae. So to begin with, I'm just going to erase a wink on the slide. Here we go. Let's imagine that this balanced equation that you're constructing contains the compound calcium chloride. Now, one of the most common mistakes that I get uh, from AS level students moving from GCSE is when they go to write calcium chloride in the reaction equation, they'll just go, well, it's got calcium in it and it's got chlorine in it, so it must be CaCl. But unfortunately, that is not the formula of calcium chloride. What you need to do whenever you're constructing a formula is consider the charges of the ions that it's comprised of. So actually, calcium chloride contains calcium and it contains chlorine. And one of the first distinctions we need to make is obviously between the metals and the non-metals. Um, and we can do that using this staircase here. Now, as a basic rule, your metals are on the left hand side. So we'll call these over here our metals and our non-metals are on the right hand side. However, we should consider hydrogen as a non-metal. OK, now. Um, why are we doing this? Well, this knowing whether it's a metal or a non-metal will enable us to apply some rules that we can then use to work out the charge of its ion. And then when we know the charge of the ion, we can construct a formula that is overall neutral. And for the metals, we do this with the group number. So we can see that calcium here is in group two. So it'll always form a two plus ion. Uh, let's say we were looking at sodium. That's in group one. So it'll form a one plus ion. And then any metals in group three, so we've got like aluminium over here, uh, that will form a three plus ion as long as it's the non-metal. OK, so that'd be three plus. So all we're really doing here to get the charge on a metal is group number plus. OK, so whatever the group number is and then put a positive charge after it. OK, so actually calcium is a Ca2 plus ion. That's how we'd write the ion of calcium or the formula of the ion for calcium. Now, chlorine is a non-metal, and hopefully you remember from GCSE that metals lose electrons, hence become positive ions, and non-metals gain electrons, hence become negative ions. And the number of electrons they lose or gain is related to their group number, because ultimately they've got to form a full outer shell. And if chlorine is in group 7, then to get to a full outer shell of 8, it needs to gain 1 electron. So chlorine would be minus one. If you're in group six, you'd need to gain two electrons to get a full outer shell, so you'd be minus two. But I'm going to say now, I don't really like that way of writing it, minus one, minus two. It's actually one minus and two minus. That's a better way of writing the charge there. OK, so you think about what nitrogen would be. It's in group five. It needs to gain three electrons. So that would be three minus. OK, so now we know that metals form positive ions, non-metals form negative ions. Then what we can do is say, well, the chloride ion is group seven, so it's got gain one, so it'll be Cl minus. So now when we look at the two charges on those ions, we can see that one of them has a two plus charge, the other has a one minus charge. And therefore, if we put them together in a one to one ratio, the charges would not cancel out. So actually what we need to do is have two of the chlorides for every one of the calcium. And the way I can do this is consider a number that both of those charges fit into. Well, we've got a two and we've got a one. Both two and one fit into two. So the way we could do this is by doing this. So I'll draw a line here. I've got to have a total of two pluses. I've got to have a total of two minuses so they cancel out. One calcium achieves that two pluses because it's got a two plus charge with a single ion. But we would need two of the chlorides in order to get that two minus charge. And therefore, then when we pair those up, we end up with the overall formula of CaCl2.
Okay, let's now have a look at another example. Okay, so let's imagine now you were writing a balanced equation that included aluminium oxide as one of the reactants or products. Then we'd need to get its formula right, otherwise we're never going to balance the equation. Okay, so aluminium oxide. So let's have a look for aluminium on the periodic table, it's over here. Aluminium is a metal, therefore it loses electrons to obtain a full outer shell. And because it's in group three, it will lose three electrons. So the ion of aluminium is Al3+. Okay, now let's have a look at oxygen that forms oxide ions. Oxygen is a non-metal in group six, therefore it needs to gain two electrons to get a full outer shell. Therefore an oxide ion is two minus. We now need to find a number that both two and three fit into. So I'm going to go for six, six pluses and six minuses. OK, that's the total that I've got to have. Now we can see that a singular aluminium ion only has three pluses on its charge. So what we need to do is have two of those aluminium ions. So I'm going to write that twice, Al3+, plus, Al3+, plus, like that. And oxide has a two minus charge, a singular oxide ion has a two minus charge. Therefore, to obtain six minus as a total, I need to do three of those. Okay, right then. So now what we need to do is write the balanced formula. Okay, so what we can see here is that overall to balance the charge, we needed two of the aluminium. So that's Al2 and three of the oxide, so O3, all one formula. There's no charge left in this formula because the whole purpose of constructing the formula in this way is to remove any charge. So that's actually the formula of aluminium oxide there. Now what we're going to do is look at another example and then we'll move on to compounds that include things called compound ions. Okay, so let's imagine now that you're asked to construct a formula for something like um, magnesium nitride. Okay, so magnesium nitride. Right, I don't know whether this compound exists, it might, it might not, um, but this is just an exercise in applying the theory. So um, magnesium is a metal in group two, so therefore it loses two electrons and forms a two plus ion. And nitrogen is a non-metal in group five. Therefore, it needs to gain three electrons and will form an N3 minus ion. Hopefully now you can see some similarities to the problem that we looked at before. A number that both two and three, the charges of the ions, fit into is six. So we're going to need a total of six pluses and six minuses. A singular magnesium ion has a two plus charge. Therefore, we're going to need three of the magnesium ions in order to get that charge that we're going to balance for. And a singular nitride ion has a three minus charge. Therefore, we're going to need two of those in order to get the six minus charge. So when we pair that formula up, or oh, those those ions up, sorry, then we will end up with a formula that is Mg3N2. Now, I want to consider the idea quickly while we're on nitride of nitride versus nitrate, okay? And um, the Id8 debate is, is quite a common one or issue that students struggle with. So what I'm going to do is just move this forward quickly and we're going to look at some terms. So if I had nitride versus nitrate, okay? So if it ends in "-ied", then it's the negative ion of a singular atom that you can find on the periodic table. So going back quickly, nitride would be the ion of nitrogen, okay, of that element. Whereas nitrate is what we call a compound ion because it's made of multiple different elements. And the eights that we tend to look at at A level all have oxygen with them. So nitride would be 
simple as n3 minus like we've seen before. So this one here would just be n3 minus. Whereas nitrate is nitrogen with oxygen, but it has the formula NO3, so one nitrogen, three oxygens. But overall, this compound of ions, or compound ion, has a one minus charge. So we just write NO3 minus. That's not a three minus charge. That's a one minus charge, but it has one nitrogen and three oxygens in the overall formula. Okay. Now nitride, you could use the periodic table for that. Okay, so you can use the periodic table to work out any that have I'd in the name ending. But if they're eights, then you need to remember these. And it's really, really important because this is a compound ion, sometimes known as a molecular ion. With your compound ions, you have to learn them. Okay, you have to learn your compound learn there we go <laughs> you have to learn your compound ions okay so what we're going to do quickly is look now at a range of different compound ions that you need to learn so we've already said nitrate is one of them which is no3 minus next up we're going to go for sulfate sulfate not to be confused with sulfide is so4 so one sulfur four oxygens, and overall has a two minus charge. Then we're going to have carbonate. Hopefully you remember this one. That's one carbon, three oxygens with a two minus charge. Then we're going to go for phosphate, which is one phosphorus, four oxygens, and a three minus charge. Next up, one of the most common ones you'll come across, and I'm going to put this up the top so we're going in order of charge, hydroxide. Now this one does end in ide, but it can't be found on the periodic table. So it's a bit of an exception to the rule that I've described above. Hydroxide has the formula OH, so one oxygen, one hydrogen, and a single minus charge. And we'll go for one more that's positive, so sort of breaks the rule a little bit here, ammonium. If you ever see ammonium in a formula, that's one nitrogen, four hydrogens, and a single positive charge. If you don't learn these compound ions going into A-level chemistry, you're going to have a bad time. So it's very, very important that you do learn these compound ions formulae. Now, I want you to now think about what a lot of these would be if they ended in ide rather than eight for, the, for a range of them anyway. So remember that nitrate is NO3 minus, whereas nitride would be N3 minus. Sulfate is SO42 minus, whereas sulfide would be S2 minus, because sulfur is in group six, so it needs to gain two electrons to get a full outer shell. You probably wouldn't come across carbide, so I'm gonna skip that one out, but let's imagine if you had phosphide, like this, okay. Phosphide is P3 minus because it's also in group five, just like nitrogen is. Let's say in the rare example, you came across hydride, which you do in year two of um, your A-level. Hydride would just be the negative ion of hydrogen. So that would actually just be H minus because hydrogen, if it were to gain electrons, uh, would only gain one to obtain a full outer shell because with hydrogen you're looking at the first shell and the first shell only takes two so if it gains one electron like that it'll have a one minus charge okay so now let's look at how we could incorporate these compound ions that you need to learn call them ci these compound ions into chemical formulae Okay, so let's start with a really simple example. Let's imagine that you were given the compound lithium nitrate. Okay, so first thing you can do is obviously look at that lithium, find it on the periodic table. It's in group one, therefore it's a one plus ion, Li plus. Okay, 
Then nitrate. As soon as you spot that, you should be thinking compound iron. That's one of the ones I need to remember. The periodic table is not going to help me here. So nitrate is NO3 minus. Now what we can see is in terms of the charges here, lithium only has a one plus charge and nitrate only has a one minus charge. So those charges are already balanced to assemble a formula. So that would just be LiNO3. That's the formula for lithium nitrate. Now let's imagine that you were given, let's say a different example. Let me just erase this here. Let's say you were given uh, magnesium nitrate instead, because there's an important rule for something we've got to do with compound ions now. So let's say you were given magnesium nitrate. Okay, so we're going to look for magnesium on the periodic table. It's in group two, so it forms a two plus ion, Mg2 plus. Lovely. We know nitrate off by heart because we've spotted it straight away in the formula. So that'll be NO3 minus. So we've got two pluses and one minus. A number that both two and one fit into is two. So we've got to assemble a formula that has both two pluses and two minuses in total for those charges to cancel. Well, I've already got that from a singular magnesium ion. But clearly I'm going to need two of the nitrates in order to get that overall two minus charge. Because remember, each nitrate only has a one minus charge. Now, the difficulty that a lot of students face is now assembling the formula. And I'd like to show you how a lot of students would do this wrong to begin with. What some students would do is say, well, I've got a singular magnesium. And then they would try to um, combine the formula of the two nitrates to go for something more like N2O6. Now, that would be what we call uh, a molecular formula to an extent, but it doesn't really tell us that that's magnesium nitrate because N2O6 is not the formula of nitrate. So that is in fact wrong. What we need to do is when we have multiples, more than one of any of the compound ions, you need to put them in brackets to denote that you have more than one of them. So this would actually take the formula Mg NO3 no spaces in that formula, sorry, it's just this pen. Close brackets, two. So that is actually the formula of magnesium nitrate. We've bracketed the compound ion and then placed the um, number of that particular ion on the outside bottom right of the brackets there. Okay, so let's now work with some more formulae that include compound ions. OK, let's look at a more challenging example, because I feel like if you can do this one, then you can pretty much do any of them. Let's say, for example, we've got calcium phosphate. OK, so calcium, typical ion of an element. Calcium's in group two. Therefore, it will form a Ca2 plus ion. Phosphate is one of the ones we need to remember. PO4, 3 minus. So we can see from the charges here, we've got a 2 plus and a 3 minus. We're trying to find a number they both fit into. Probably getting used to this now. It's 6. So we're going to have 6 pluses and 6 minuses. Now, in order to get 6 pluses, we're going to need 3 of the calcium ions because each singular calcium ion has a 2 plus charge. Therefore, 3 of them will give us a 6 plus charge. The phosphate only has a three minus charge. So we're going to need two of those in order to get the six minuses to cancel overall for charge. And because phosphate is a compound ion and we have more than one of it, it needs to go in brackets. But remember, we don't need to bracket the calcium because calcium is not a compound ion. So we're gonna end up with Ca3, open brackets, PO4, close brackets, 2. And there we have the formula of calcium phosphate. OK, now what I'm going to do is show you how this links to the formula of acids, because actually working from an ionic approach like we are here enables us to determine the formula of all of the main acids that we look at in A-level chemistry. 
and then we're going to construct some overall balanced equations for the reactions of some metals with some acids. Okay, now the acids that you should remember from GCSE are as follows. The first acid you should know is hydrochloric acid. Okay, come back to that in a second. The second acid you should know is nitric acid. The third acid you should know is sulfuric acid. I always spell this one with an F. And a new acid that you might not know is phosphoric acid. A lot of people have heard of phosphoric acid before, but they probably haven't come across it at uh, GCSE. Now, hydrochloric acid at the top here has the formula HCl. Nitric acid has the formula HNO3. Sulfuric acid has the formula H2SO4. And phosphoric acid has the formula H3PO4. Now I'm hoping that you're going to spot something similar about these acids and potentially the ions or compound ions that we have just looked at. And then secondly, a common feature of all of those acids. So if we look at hydrogen, uh, hydrochloric acid, then it would actually make more sense to consider hydrochloric acid as a combination of a single H plus ion and a chloride ion with a one minus charge. The same goes for nitric acid, where we consider it to be a singular hydrogen ion and a nitrate, nitrate sorry, ion with a one minus charge. So the reason that nitric acid has the formula HNO3, where there is only one H, is the fact that it is actually hydrogen nitrate. Now we're not going to call it hydrogen nitrate, but in terms of the way that we balance its formula, that's essentially all it is. We can do the same now for sulfuric acid. If we consider it to contain the sulfate ion, SO4 2 minus, then it's got two H pluses paired up with that. And that's because sulfate has a two minus charge and the hydrogen ion, this one here, always has a one plus charge. So you're going to need two of the hydrogen ion for every one of the sulfate ion in order to balance for charge in the formula of sulfuric acid. With phosphoric acid, it's got a phosphate ion in it. So therefore, we need three hydrogen ions, each with a singular one plus charge, in order to balance that three minus charge of the phosphate ion. So you can consider sulfuric acid as hydrogen sulfate to an extent. That doesn't quite follow the, the rules for the hydrogen sulfate ion. I won't come on to today and we in fact it would probably be better just to not break that rule too much to call it dihydrogen sulfate and therefore phosphoric acid under that pretense becomes trihydrogen phosphate now important to note these are not the names of the acids, but there are, they are a way in which you can consider the formula if you're constructing it using the ionic approach, as is shown over here. Now, this is important to know when you're reacting acids, because it tells you what's happening when you form the soluble salt. So let's say, for example, I took magnesium and reacted it with nitric acid then what is really happening here is the magnesium is going to lose electrons and pair up with the nitrate ion from the nitric acid which is why magnesium nitrate is the soluble salt that is formed from the reaction of magnesium with nitric acid and we also get because magnesium is more reactive than hydrogen it from the acid, we get hydrogen being displaced. So we're going to get hydrogen here. 
So we could now go ahead to try to construct a balanced symbol equation for this using the rules that we've just looked at. So magnesium is a metal. We don't write um, any numbers after its formula. We write them as monoatomic, even though they don't exist as singular atom particles. They exist as giant metallic lattices in terms of their structure and bonding. Um, but we just write them as a single atom in their formula. Nitric acid will be HNO3. Now, when we're trying to write the formula of magnesium nitrate, we must consider the charges of the ions. So magnesium is a two plus ion. Nitrate is a one minus ion. So therefore, we will need two nitrates for every one magnesium to form the formula of magnesium nitrate. And whenever you see hydrogen written in its own space in an equation, it's always H2. So now what we can do is balance this equation. I can see one nitrate on the left, but two nitrates on the right. So I'm going to need two of the HNO3 in order for this to balance. I've got two hydrogens on the right. Following that balancing, I now have two hydrogens on the left. I have one magnesium on the right and one on the left. So we're now balanced. We could add state symbols as well. Metals are always solid, except mercury, of course. Acids are always aqueous. That means to be dissolved in water. You have to say dissolved in water with those. The soluble salt that is a form, a product of any acid metal redox reaction is always aqueous. And hydrogen exists naturally as a gas in its standard state. Just to make clear, that aqueous there, I've not written that superscript high up. I was just making good use of the space there. It should just be written on the right-hand side in standard script as it is in the rest. Let's try and construct some more formulae now for other acid metal reactions. Okay, so I am just making these up on the spot. And we're going to try to react calcium this time with hydrochloric acid. Now, hopefully from GCSE, you'll remember that any hydrochloric acid reaction produces a chloride soluble salt. So we're going to have calcium chloride and any acid metal reaction. So we've got acid and metal reacting here always produces hydrogen. As the hydrogen is displaced from the acid as the metal is more reactive than hydrogen. Let's now start to construct a balanced symbol equation. Calcium is Ca, be a solid. Hydrochloric acid is HCl, it'll be aqueous. Calcium chloride, let's consider the formula. Calcium is a two plus ion. Chlorine forms a singular one minus charge on its ion. So therefore the formula of calcium chloride will be CaCl2 in order to balance for charge. That'll be aqueous as well. And hydrogen is always H2 as a gas. Calcium chloride <clears throat> contains two of the chloride ions, whereas hydrochloric acid only contains one chloride ion per mole or molecule of hydrochloric acid. So therefore we need two of these. We can't change the formula of hydrochloric acid at all. You can't do that. You need to put coefficients or balancing numbers in front. That's now balanced for the calcium chloride. It's now balanced for the hydrogen and it's also balanced for the calcium. Okay, let's try another one then quick. Um, let's go for, let's do sodium. And we'll react that this time with sulfuric acid. Any reaction of a sulfuric acid produces a sulfate soluble salt. So we're going to form sodium sulfate. And because it's an acid metal reaction again, we're going to produce hydrogen. Let's put in the formula we know, sodium, Na plus, oh sorry, Na solid in this case. Sulfuric acid, H2SO4. <clears throat> sodium sulfate, consider the formula. A sodium ion is Na plus. A sulfate ion we should remember as a compound ion, SO4 2 minus. Each sulfate ion has a two minus charge, but each sodium ion only has a one plus charge. Therefore, I need two sodiums for every one sulfate. 
no brackets involved because I don't have more than one of the compound iron sulfate. Just to confirm, the acid is always aqueous, dissolved in water, as is the soluble salt, unless it's a known insoluble compound. And hydrogen is H2 as a gas. Check for balance now. I've got one sulfate on the right. I've got one on the left. Good. I've got two hydrogens on the right. I've got two on the left. Good. I have two sodiums on the right, but only one on the left. Coefficient balanced. There we go. OK, so what you can see I've done here is written up um, a bunch of problems from A to F. And what I want you to do for these is write balanced formulae uh, for them. So I'm just going to do one as an example quickly. Lithium is a group one metal, so it forms an Li plus ion. Oxygen is a group six non-metal, so it forms an O2 minus ion. A number that both two and one fit into is two. So therefore, the formula of lithium oxide will be Li2O. So all it is your job to do now is pause this video, try to construct these formulae, remember your compound ions. In fact, what I'll do is I'll write them on the left just before you start, and then you can pause, and then come back to the video and see if you got those formulae correct. Okay, so they've been written there on the left, as you can see. Those are only, remember, the compound ions I'm giving you there. So um, you can use those um, if necessary to construct these formulae. So pause the video, do give this a go. Don't be inclined to just keep watching and see whether or not your innate thought in your head was correct, because that's just a bad way to learn. All right, so do actually pause the video and, and have a go at it um, rather than just coasting because students that coast do not get good grades okay so pause it have a go then come back okay i hope you didn't just lie to yourself so <laughs> let's try sodium carbonate then so sodium is a group one metal forms a one plus charge carbonate is a compound ion forms a two minus charge two and one both fit into two so we're going to end up with the formula na2co3 Magnesium is a group 2 metal with a 2 plus charge. Sulfate is a compound ion with a 2 minus charge. These two pair up 1 to 1 as their charges are already balanced, so we get the formula MgSO4. Aluminium is a group 3 metal with a 3 plus charge on its ion. Chloride is a group 7 non-metal with a 1 minus charge on its ion. They both fit into the number 3. Therefore, we need the, num uh, the formula AlCl3. Calcium, a group 2 metal with a 2 plus charge on its ion. Nitrate, a compound ion with the formula NO3 and a 1 minus charge. We need two nitrates for every one calcium. So we get the formula CaNO3-2. Magnesium is a group 2 metal with a 2 plus charge. Hydroxide is a compound ion with a 1 minus charge. Therefore, we need two hydroxides for every one magnesium. And because it's a compound ion, it does get bracketed. So it's Mg open brackets, OH close brackets, 2. There we go. So if you've been able to do that, then make sure whenever you're given a word equation that you've got to turn into a balanced symbol equation, that you work out the formulae of that particular soluble salt product first, or that alkali or that acid, to ensure that when you're balancing the equation, you're actually balancing it for the correct formula and you're not just balancing some made up formulae. Okay, so now what I'm going to do in the next part is give you a series of reaction word equations that you can then construct formulae or symbol equations that are balanced yourselves. Okay, let's move on to that. Okay, so you've seen me do this in the couple of slides back. What I did is convert these into balanced symbol equations. So what I want you to do again, if you could pause the video here and try to construct your own balanced symbol equations. I don't want you at this stage to worry too much about the state symbols, but if you've spotted the trend that I showed before, then you would be able to put them in yourself. Okay, so pause the video here, do pause it, and then come back and see if the answers that you got were the same. OK, then. Right. So we've got magnesium, Mg, hydrochloric acid, HCl, magnesium chloride. You should have got the formula MgCl2 and hydrogen. You should have got the formula H2. Let's now balance.
two chlorides on the right, one on the left, two, two hydrogens on the right, two on the left, balanced, one magnesium on the right, one on the left, balanced. Add in the arrow, never put an equal sign, pluses, this will be a solid, this will be aqueous because it's our acid, it'll be dissolved in water, this is our soluble salt that'll be dissolved in water, and hydrogen is a gas. Next one, sodium, Na, phosphoric acid, H3PO4, sodium phosphate, Na3PO4, shouldn't be a space there, sorry, it's just this pen, hydrogen, H2, one phosphate on the right, one on the left, good. Hydrogens though, two on the right, three on the left. Let's find a number that both two and three fit into. Two and three both fit into six. So I'm gonna put a three here to make six hydrogens and a two here. But now we've changed our balancing for the phosphate ion. We can see we've got two phosphates on the left now, but only one on the right. So I'm gonna multiply this by two. We can also see now that's changed the number of sodiums. We've got two times three, so we've actually got six. So there we've got a balanced equation for the formation of sodium phosphate. Put my state symbols in. And there we go. Next one, aluminium plus nitric acid. Al, HNO3 for your nitric acid. Aluminium nitrate should be Al, open brackets, NO3, 3. Hydrogen, H2. Let's try to balance. Now, we have got three nitrates on the right-hand side, but we've only got one nitrate on the left. So let's just pop a three there. We can work with that balancing in a minute. We've got two hydrogens on the right, but only three on the left. Again, we're gonna to need to find a number that they both fit into. So both two and three fit into six. So I'm gonna to need to multiply this by three. I'm gonna to need to change this number here to now a six. Now we can see that's changed the number of nitrates. I have six nitrates this side, but only three this side. So I'm gonna multiply this by two, because two times three gives me the six. And then if we count the aluminiums on this side, I have two. Uh, so I'm gonna put a two here. I'm gonna make the aluminium a solid. This will be aqueous. This will be aqueous and this will be a gas. So there we go. So hopefully you've made quite a bit of progress with this and um, I hope you found this useful.